Take it away, Ali. Thank you. It's yours. Hello, everyone. Um, before we introduce ourselves, we just want to thank everyone for being here. Uh, my name is Ali, as you already know. These are Nadine, Alice, and Farah, the Abdelaziz sisters. And we'll start off by letting you guys introduce yourselves to us and to everyone. Tell us a little bit about your uh, past before uh, being Instagram famous. What did you study? Uh, what were you doing at that time? Your family? Okay. Hi, everyone. First of all, I want to uh, thank everyone for being here. I want to thank the organizer of this big event because this is something very essential in the world of social media to be able to speak and to um, share our experience for that others can learn from our stories and uh, like know what we did and how we did it. First of all, I want to um, start uh, to speak about myself. I'm Alice Abdelaziz. I'm uh, the eldest uh, between Nadine and Fati, Farah. I graduated in uh, the Lebanese University, uh, the Lebanese American University in Beirut. I studied marketing and I worked in the HR and recruitment um, uh, industry before moving into fashion and becoming an influencer and a celebrity. So um, tell us more, what did you do? I'm Nadine, I'm 26 years old. I, uh, uh, I hold a business degree in management in the St. Joseph University, it's a French university. <laughs> Uh, we are half, actually, we are half Lebanese, half Romanian. Our mom is Romanian. We speak four languages, Arabic, French, English, and Romanian. Before Instagram, when I graduated, I was told to participate in Mysterism World uh, pageant in Bangkok. So I won second runner-up. And I started modeling at the age of 17. I walked for almost all the Lebanese designers. Uh, with the booming of social media, I opened my first Facebook account. Uh, this is be before Instagram got popular. When it got uh, popular, I, I opened my first Instagram account. Farah. Hello, everyone. My name is Farah Abdel Aziz. I'm 25 years old, and I uh, hold a business uh, uh, degree in management. And before Instagram, I was just like uh, finishing my exam. Uh, my last year in the university, so pretty much my life was like very simple. A student. <laughs> As a student, yeah. yeah, so like this. Away from all the social media drama <laughs> nowadays, yeah. So when you actually started blowing, uh, blogging and your Instagram pa uh, pages, uh, did you ever think you were going to become the Kardashians of the Middle East? Uh, never. never. Uh, no. We never expected uh, to be called the Kardashian of the Middle East. Actually, what happened is that one day I was bored at work and I was like um, uh, saying to myself, I don't want to work in an office. I want to do something big. I want to do something to inspire people. And I created a page on Instagram. It was the very first page in the Middle East called Style in Beirut. It was a style inspiration page. I wanted to, uh, to show people from all around the world that Lebanon is still the Paris, uh, the cap uh, Beirut is still the Paris of the Middle East, and that Lebanese women are very stylish, uh, fashionable, are very smart, can be entrepreneur, and can hold like high positions in the work industry, and not just what people think of Lebanon, that it's an Arab country, we have the political issues, and uh, you know, all the negative uh, things they say about our country. So I wanted to show the positive and the good side of Lebanon. And uh, uh, people started uh, following uh, the account because uh, they were seeing the pictures that they were, ver uh, the pictures were very inspiring. I was um, uh, posting uh, fashion trends, beauty trends, what the Lebanese are, um, uh, are wearing on the street. So I got all the Lebanese fashion-oriented women to follow my account, to engage and to comment. And uh, at the beginning, Instagram was very easy because it was, the posts were very chronological, so people uh, were, uh, were able to see all the posts in a chronological order. So uh, um, I was getting a lot of views, a, a lot of likes, a lot of comments, and it started to grow. And it was one of the most famous accounts in the Middle East. And uh, um, I, was, I had my personal account and I was working on my personal account as well and to show people that I love fashion and I'm wearing, um, I can be having a good picture on the streets, not in the studio with a professional photographer. 
and this is when uh, uh, we started following this trend because you don't have to have a, a professional photographer to be able to show your side to the public. You can just take a picture on the street with a phone and post it and people will like what you're wearing. And uh, uh, then companies started to send us emails uh, wanting to um, invite us to their big events and um, 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 or to send us gifts, to send us goodies, or uh, wanting to collaborate with us. So back then, we started going to the event as the trio, as the sisters, and always matching. It was one, I don't know if it was intended or not intended, because uh, we were always, like, we had this very, yeah, like, we are very good friends, we're best friends, and we always like to wear something that is similar, like... Um, the same spirit. Yeah, like now. Like, for example, <laughs> now, like. you know? So we were always going to the event <laughs> wearing the same shade, wearing from the same designer, um, and people started to look at us, oh, wow. Triplets. Are they triplets? Are, there, <laughs> uh, are they triplets? Who they are? Are they sisters, triplets? Wh uh, what do they do? So this is how we uh, draw the attention of the media and we got a call that changed our destiny and it was the call from a major, major uh, TV channel in the Middle East and they asked us if they want, if we want to be uh, the stars of a new reality TV show that will hit the Arab world and will be the first of its kind and uh, yeah, this is how it all started. Yeah, it all started. We and once you did the show, uh, the reaction of the media, especially the locals one at first, was huge. What yeah. do you think drew the attention that much to a show, uh, especially in the Middle East? Yeah, I would say because it was new, it was something new, it was the first reality show in Lebanon. Uh, you know, people like to watch, uh, to see uh, how sisters live, what do they do, where do, uh, where do they go out, uh, what are they wearing? What are they talking about? What are they fighting about? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, this is what drew the attention, I think. And uh, people uh, were used to see us only on Instagram because back then, I'm speaking uh, five years ago, or four years ago, there was no Insta stories and Snapchat was not so uh, popular, popular like now. So people were only seeing pictures that were only uh, uh, posted on Instagram and they did not know our personality or our, our character. Like, do, are they always smiling? Are they only are always so perfect? So we want them to see that we are not perfect. We, we, want have our, we, we wanted have them to see the real us, that yeah. sometimes we can fight uh, as uh, sisters, because on social media you can only post like uh, pictures or videos, but you only show the perfect pictures. You, you post the perfect videos, but on TV everything is real. Like you can't like tell them, Cut, <laughs> let's uh, repeat this scene because sometimes we fight, we have fun, we go out. Like we wanted to show them our lifestyles in our country, so, yeah. and to show them uh, beautiful Beirut. Yeah. Since you've experienced both TV exposure and uh, social media exposure, what do you think is more powerful? Definitely people. social media, yeah. because nowadays the so social media influence, it's global, it's not limited to one country, it's, it's a two-way communication channel, whereas um, TV exposure it gives you a specific target audience, but on social media uh, you are exposed to the whole world, so I would say social media platforms are more important. Yeah. And when you use your social media, when you actually started, um, and comparing it to now, uh, do the tools that you use, uh, are different? Are they different from back then? Yes, from definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Everything is changing now. Like, for example, the um, Instagram algorithm is changing. Like, people are not being able to see the post chronologically yeah. um, like back then. So we have to uh, put more effort for our post to be um, uh, to be visible to everyone, to a larger audience, because we want to. Uh, grow our uh, platform. The, uh, the more we grow our platforms, the more we, we, grow. Can, we grow and our business grows. But I think the best tool for me is uh, on social media is uh, being myself. Like I, uh, I don't pretend to be someone else just like to get more followers or to get more likes on my pictures. 
So this is my weapon to be myself, to be honest with my audience, and always to show them what they like to see. For example, when I do like makeup videos, they ask me what kind of products you're using, so I can go live on, on my Instagram and talk with them. So it's a good interaction between me and my um, followers. Yeah. Yeah. So as we know, nowadays there are a lot of bloggers and influencers, especially in the couples or a couple of years, last couple of years. So how do you differentiate yourself from other bloggers and influencers? And at the same time, how do you differentiate yourself from each other as the sisters? Uh, well, I think that everyone who wants to differentiate himself or herself from the other has to have something different because everyone wants to be an influencer now and everyone wants to be a blogger, but not everyone knows how to produce a creative content and this is something very essential because when you want to be different you have to be original you, you cannot like replicate a post that you saw you cannot just okay um, uh, uh, post pictures of your outfits every day people will get bored you have to give something that is original maybe uh, maybe um, a post that for example we did like a, a week or two weeks ago I will share the story uh, we were um, in Dubai and uh, I was on the poll, and then uh, we wanted to do a very, uh, a very funny pose. So I did a picture uh, with my sister Nadine on the pool. My back was, uh, <laughs> uh, my head was not. Uh, she was bending her head. I so was bending you can my head. Only, only see her, her body, and yeah. next to her body there was my head, and she was pulling my hair. Pool. Yeah. And I, I wrote a caption, "Dude, where's my head?" Yeah. So this picture got 120,000 likes, 4,000 yeah. comments, and five million reach. Five million reach. This one post got five million reach and I got 10,000 yeah. followers and in one day. We got 10,000 followers in one day. But you know, not only it got reposted, everyone did the same picture. Yeah. They tried to do the same and picture. Everyone it was, was so, talking about so the funny. post and it's still until now it's getting reposted and there yes. are a lot of other posts. So it's about um, uh, uh, um, giving something original, something a new, uh, a post that can be reposted and um, uh, that people will talk about, you know? This yeah. is how people you can be more creative. Uh, creative. People yeah. like how do you fun? differentiate yourselves yeah. from each other? Since you are three and you're considered as a brand, but for example, if a brand comes and want, wants to work with only one of you, how do you differentiate between yourselves? Well, Nadine is a model because she has a huge experience in the modeling industry. Uh, she modeled for uh, several big designers. She opened the show with Kendall Jenner mm -hmm. two years back in Dos Bidis fashion show in Antalya. And she is now being, uh, she's um, uh, the official um, uh, work, uh, she's officially working with guests in their campaigns and modeling when they have a fashion show. And until now, she's uh, doing big fashion shows. Uh, Fafi is, um, uh, yeah, the makeup <laughs> guru. She loves makeup. She's the beauty junkie uh, <laughs> blogger. Uh, she talks about uh, makeup, uh, makeup um, tips, brand, like, uh, yeah. videos. I show them what's trendy. Uh, yeah. And uh, also fitness. And also fitness because she is a uh, uh, fitness uh, uh, <laughs> freak. You freak. should teach me how to do the eyeliner. I don't know how to put <laughs> eyeliner. Yeah, and uh, myself, I'm a very, uh, I'm oriented in fashion and lifestyle, and I'm an entrepreneur because I launched my uh, own cosmetic beach product. So, uh, so actually, moving to that, uh, you made headlines uh, a couple of years ago for making more than half a million dollars while the three of you were under 25 years old. Yeah. And this year, you had your own startup company which has cosmetic products, and now it's estimated to be worth a uh, million dollars. Uh, is social media your only source of income? And how did you monetize your platforms into these numbers? Uh, yes. Uh, uh, like now I can say that social media helped us a lot uh, with um, uh, uh, the monetization because uh, we're getting paid for um, uh, our sponsored posts, uh, for sponsored uh, videos, for a campaign. So uh, now brands are paying a huge amount of money to influencers because they can reach a wider audience and they can boost their sales. And um, uh, this is how we made the uh, half a million uh, dollar uh, in a year uh, because we had, uh, it's not about having a lot of collaboration. It's about having collaborations uh, with um, uh, companies that, um, um, that are well 
how can I say that? It's, it's not the, science community. the influence. Yeah, the it's, it's not the number of collaborations, you know. You can do one collaboration or two collaborations, but these collaborations are uh, very big, you know. This will be very bi a big project for you. And uh, because we are sharing the profit with a lot of companies nowadays, and especially in fashion, because people are loving what we wear, so they go to the website, to the e-commerce, they are uh, shopping exactly what we are wearing and more, and we are getting 15 or 20 percent from um, uh, from the sales. So as a commission, and uh, yeah, uh, this is one way really? of uh, uh, doing money out of social media, and there is another way that is uh, my own um, uh, company that I started um, uh, last year. And I did my own uh, Wondersan. Wondersan is um, uh, um, is uh, our three product. Uh, it's a tanning oil, a sunblock, and um, a hair serum. And people were always asking me about my hair, about what I use to get uh, a very fast tan in summer. So I wanted to uh, give them uh, my secret, and it was a secret I shared with my sisters and my grandma because it's her recipe and uh, people liked the product. I did a very big lunch and I gave away a lot of uh, products to um, uh, Arab celebrities and they all supported me and it went... Uh, and they, like, they yeah. liked it so much. Yeah, so I'm gonna use it tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah so <laughs> this is very essential by the way because like most uh, people are now only focusing on just social media and Instagram but you never know after one year or two years or three years or five years, maybe there will no, uh, there will be no more. Actually, that was going to be my next yeah. question. Um, your power relies hugely on the presence and the existence of an application, yeah. which is Instagram. Aren't you afraid that there will come a time where Instagram will no longer be where it is today? For example, we have seen it with Facebook and Instagram. It phased out from Facebook into Instagram, and now everyone is using Instagram. Don't, aren't you afraid that the same thing will happen all over again and you will have to start somewhere else from the beginning maybe on another app? Personally, I'm not because I'm not thinking of it. <laughs> uh, I think for now I'm not. Yeah. But when you establish yourself in the industry, people now recognize you, like they know your name. So for example, if there is a new application and you have, um, you have loyal followers, they will follow you to the next application and whatsoever, you know. But uh, I was saying before that it's very important not to only rely on social media and our platforms because in the end um, uh, you, have, uh, you have to uh, be smarter and do something that will last. Like for example, if you create your own company, if you create your own product, if you do your fashion line, your, um, I don't know. Uh, I think it's a yeah. challenge for everyone. If something new will come up for me, I will always work on myself. Like, uh, <laughs> show the best um, and uh, as, uh, as she said people uh, already like know me so yeah yeah so uh, at last this is your second time uh, with inflow yeah. uh, inflow summit yeah. tell us about your experience and uh, what made you come again yeah uh, we're very this yeah this is our first second time, time with uh, second time with inflow but our first time as public in speaker Doha. And it's our first time in Doha. Uh, I want to say that we are very excited and we're happy to be here because like, I'm very happy that there are companies who are uh, putting uh, the light on uh, social media because uh, nowadays yeah. still people ask us, what do you guys do? You're just influencers. You just put pictures on social media. They don't take us, uh, uh, take us seriously and they take everything for granted. But uh, they don't know that like influencer uh, is a job, and influencer means having uh, the, um, having the potential to uh, um, to uh, have an effect on uh, people in their buying. Um, uh, the, the, their yeah, exactly, decision. on their buying decision. So uh, <laughs> uh, people still ask us, "What do you guys do?" And they don't take uh, the life of a blogger or influencer in a very serious way. So I'm very happy that. Uh, they started um, and knowing and recognizing uh, that influencer uh, marketing is very important and um, uh, uh, brands are, um, uh, are uh, adding uh, 
new strategy into their marketing campaign, and this is the influencer Instagram marketing or the Instagram mar uh, influencer marketing, and they're giving the chance to uh, influencer uh, to be on uh, um, to be like a model. For example, uh, we saw the Dolce Gabbana show, uh, show last year. They took influencers to open their show and to do the tattoo. They didn't have the models and uh, big brands are having uh, influencers to do their campaign they're not uh, asking a celebrities like before they were just okay. approaching celebrities now they are approaching influencer so this is a big opportunity for us to stand uh, to stand out and to say to everyone that uh, we can be powerful uh, because we did a lot of effort we put a lot of effort in our Instagram and social media, and we are um, uh, creating um, uh, a content that is very powerful, and we are uh, uh, doing a business. Uh, so I'm very happy that Inflow are putting uh, is putting the light on this on social media. Yeah. yeah.